In this video, we are going to be setting it up so our little bogan can start throwing his thongs at his enemies. Let's take a look at how to do it. The only asset you're going to need to follow along today is something to act as your projectile. So you can grab the thong.png from my itch or GitHub, or else come up with something of your own to suit the your The first game. thing we're going to do is create a new scene to act as our projectile. So let's jump into Godot, create a new scene, and we're going to have an area 2D as our root let's node. Let's get have a look. to it. So the first thing we need to do, as we discussed, was create a new scene, and we are going to use an area 2D as our root node. Let's uh, rename that one straight away to thong, just so we can keep track of everything. All right, so that's the basis for our scene. Let's save it um, so that we don't lose track of what we're doing. Now, we need to add two things. One is gonna be a way of actually seeing our thong, which will be a Sprite 2D. And the other one is a way for that thong to interact with other things in the environment. And that's gonna be a collision shape. So let's do that. So we're gonna add a new node. We're gonna search for our collision shape 2D. That's that one there. Then we're also going to click back on our root node thong, search for another one, and it's going to be a Sprite 2D. So our Sprite 2D is what's going to represent our thong. So if you've um, already copied that thong.png into your project file, you should be able to find it down below and drag it up to that texture. And there we have our thong. Now, if memory serves, I made this like maybe a bit bigger than the scale of the rest of the game. So I'm just gonna shrink it down a little bit there. Sweet. And what we wanna do next is add that collision shape. So that's why we've got our little warning here next to our collision shape 2D. So I'm gonna click on that. And then I'm gonna come across to our inspector, find our shape where it says empty. And we're just gonna add a circle shape. That's near enough for me. Save that. That is step one complete. Next, we will need to have a look at our script. Time to assemble our script for our project. Attach a script to this one. I'm going to click on our root node and then we're going to click on that little script with the green plus. And yes, thong.gd is the perfect name for this particular script. So there's a few things we need here. So rather than me typing these out with my terrible, terrible typing skills, I am going to copy and paste this across and then we're going to work with it there. So here is our new script. We are going to extend our area 2D. Um, because that's what our root node is. We've then got a few variables here. So we've got a velocity variable, which we're gonna take our vector to. Our range and our speed, these don't really matter because we play around with them down here, but we're just initiating them there. And also our star position. Where is our thong going to appear? All right, in our ready function, we are going to set what that star position is, which is the global position of our player, right? So we want our thong to appear where our player is, at least to start with. Then we want to work out where this thong is going to go. So we create a new function called set direction. We're going to take a couple of arguments there. We want to know what our vector two is, like that direction that we're going. And we also want to know what the player level is because we're going to use that as a multiplier to sort of sort out how fast and far we can throw our thongs, right? So there's a little bit of that advancement built in right from the get-go. So we've got these two arguments we're passing through, the direction, which we're going to grab that vector two, and also a player level, which is an integer. And that player level, remember, um, if you've been following along the whole time, is actually a global variable if you haven't been following along the whole time and you don't have a global variable for a player level you can add it in just like that you could even um, do away with what we're doing here altogether in truth because you don't need these bits but it's just making it a little bit nicer so we're going to then um, set our direction take those two arguments we're then going to set up our speed which is going to be 20 times our player level and our range or plus 20 times our player level and our range plus 10 times our player level so that's sort of our base and then we're building on it our velocity is going to be normalized times our speed Right, so that's our set direction function. We then have our process function and we're going to take in a float here just to uh, work out where we're going and how fast we're going and all these sorts of bizos. So in our process function, we're going to take that delta float. So we're going to say our global position plus equals our velocity times delta. And then if our global position um, is larger than the distance that we've um, set up, what our range is. So if we've thrown the thong as far as it can go, we then want the thong to disappear. We want it to delete itself, right? So this is what's sort of happening in here. We're setting how far we can throw our thong so it doesn't just continue on for the entire screen. And now we have a little function down the bottom here, which is for our on body entered. And there's one extra thing we're gonna to have to do here and that is signal this area 2D through because right now it's not connected. So if we go over to our node screen over there, our node window, 
um, make sure we've got our thong root node connected. Then we're going to go to our body entered, double click on that and connect it through. And that should give us a nice little green thingy here. There it is. So what we've got in our on body entered function is we're checking to see if our, uh, if the body the thong is entering is in the enemy group. So what I mean by that is if we go to our magpie, so if you've not been following along, um, in the ready function of our magpie, our main enemy, we've got this add to group enemy. So what I do is I'm just gonna add every single enemy I make, we'll have that in there, and it just groups them, which makes things a little bit easier. So then in our thong, we're checking to see if it's an enemy that we're hitting. Um, that's just a little debug statement, don't really need that. That's just so I can work on my uh, things as I'm going. We then want to let that body know that it needs to take damage equivalent of, I've just set this as 100, we could pass some information through here as well. but. What this is doing is it's using the take damage function in whatever we're coming into contact with. So we know it has to be an enemy, right? So if this enemy body has a take damage function, we're going to pass 100 to that and then delete our thong. So if we go back into our magpie and we will find, if we scroll down, our take damage function with a particular amount. So we're just signaling this through. So our thong is just making use of that here. So the body that we've come into contact with, if it's an enemy, it's gonna have that in there and we're gonna pass through damage of 100, whatever. Change that to what you want and then delete our thong. That is our script for our thong from start to finish. Next, we may need to make a couple of small changes to our player script to handle the firing of that projectile and all the mouse stuff. So let's have a look at how to do scene. That. We've created our thong script. Now we're gonna have a bit of a tinker around in our player script. So let's uh, find our player script. There it is there. And this is a big long one in mine. Um, if you've been following along, yours should look very similar. All right, what we need to do first, we've got to set up a way um, to create our thong when we um, want it to appear on our scene, right? So the way we're gonna do that is with this little line of code, we're gonna preload our thong scene. So we've got a new variable called thong scene. And what we wanna do there is preload our thong.tscn file. So we're just getting that particular file ready to go when we need it. So we're dropping that in up the top with all of our variables. That is step one. Next thing we wanna do is find our way down to where we've got our um, inputs. So here we go, here our function input. This is all gonna stay exactly as it is. All of that stuff that's already there, we don't wanna change it. What we wanna do though, is just add something further to it at the end. And again, to save all of my typos, I shall copy and paste this in. So here we go, here is what we're adding. Um, fire projectile not found in base self. All right, leave that with me. We have to fix that in a moment. So what we've got here is, um, we're creating our else if statement. So if the event is the input event mouse button and event button index equals equals mouse button right and event press. So what we're trying to do here is find out if we are clicking that um, right mouse button. If our attacking is set to true, um, we then set our is attacking to true, um, reset our attack timer. Um, we then create a variable for our mouse position. So that equals get global mouse position. So we're finding out where it is. And then we wanna fire our projectile towards our mouse. So that's what's happening um, there in that one. So now, as you might be able to imagine, we need to create our fire projectile function. So um, to do that, we're gonna do another copy and paste. I'll pop this in down the bottom here so I've got some space. And here is our new function called fire projectile. So we're gonna take our target position, the vector two, then we're going to create a new variable called projectile instance, um, and that is going to equal our thong scene, which is this dude way up here, remember our thong scene? So we want to have a new instance of that thong scene. So we instantiate our thong scene. If you were using, or if you're used to Godot 3.5, this would have been um, instance instead of instantiate. So just make sure you get that one right. We then want to add that as a child to this particular scene. Um, we want to send it off in the direction we want um, where the enemy is, basically. Um, oh, hang on, this is where we're creating it, um, where the player is, and then we want to send it off to where the enemy is, right? So that's um, setting up our firing of our projectile. So let's save what we have done there. Alrighty, let's give it a, give it a test, I suppose. So let's, uh, let's give it a run. Player's buzzer. So, all right, so you can see the projectile is definitely going and... 
haven't managed to hit. All right. So one thing that isn't working is we're not hitting the player, and I think I know uh, the enemy, and I think I know why that is. So what we need to do is go to our thong scene, go to our root node for our thong, go to our collision um, information here, and add mask two because our magpie is layer two mask two. So uh, layer two, sorry. So if our magpie is layer two, we need to make sure that our mask for our thong is also on two. So let's save that, give it another go, and see if we can actually make contact with the enemy all right here's one here and we can excellent we are done ladies and gentlemen you now have a working thong projectile that you can pepper the local magpies with to keep yourself safe excellent let's have a look at our must may might so in order to get this all working, you must create that thong scene or projectile scene and the script for it, as well as updating your player script too. What you may like to do is tinker with those variables that control the speed and distance and damage and those things to better suit the mechanics of your game. And what you might consider is creating a copy of that thong, changing the color to pink and implementing the logic so that the thong script changes which thong is shown depending on which character is selected, be that Baza or so Shazza. It, you should now have a projectile for your Godot for ARPG. Next well, I'm going to tackle a bit of a chunky, juicy one, and that's going to be guilds. So there might be uh, a few episodes broken up for that one, but that's where and we're heading. The quote next. I'd like to leave you with this week, brought to you by my iOS app. Quote book is from George Eliot, and he once said, It is never too late to be what you might have been. Thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.